Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindon on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the Good Life experience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. It is once again a great joy to welcome you to your favorite Good Life Devotion on this platform at this time. I'm sure you know that we are in for the right division of God's word and to receive the ministry of the spirit of God through his word. If today is your first time of joining, I just relax because you are going to have a cruise in the truth of God's word like you've never received before. I'm glad to announce to you that the Gulai devotion is now global and we are at the dimension of making it a household devotion. Because the Gulai devotion is not on Faisal TV. All you need is to download the Faisal TV app on the Android platform or the iOS platform. And wherever you go, you can have the Gulai devotion at the prescribed times and also enjoy amazing Christian programming on that TV. If you're on the African sub region, you know the platforms on which we are already. You see, while we were only in Ghana, I kept on telling you that we are going global, be part of the bandwagon. We spread to Africa, I told you. Be part of the bandwagon. Now we are global. I'm telling you, be part of the bandwagon. We are going to become a household name. Not just for the name, but a source of truth. Because the Lord Jesus is resounding truth upon the whole earth through the glad devotion. Anyone born of God must endeavor to be part of this. How can you be part of it? Be part of praying regularly that the hearts of people will be open to receive the truth and that many more will be harvested into the kingdom and that the body of Christ will be mature through the teachings. Then take it to a media platform by yourself. Recommend it to family members and friends. Let them know that there is this trusted source of truth consistently coming to them every day, Monday to Friday, all around the world. And then Make sure you also commit some amount to getting it spread to places where you may never be physically able to reach. It's just an opportunity the Lord is giving you to share in the dividends of his final move on the earth in terms of the spirit. Praise God. So on this note, I welcome you again to today's episode. We're dealing with the subject of Jesus first. And we began by letting you know that Jesus being first is a fundamental divine principle instituted for the success of everything that exists and anything that does not recognize it and let it be so in its way of functioning is functioning against an ordained divine principle and it will be destroyed. I use the principle or the law of gravity to illustrate it. That, that someone does not know of the law of gravity or things that is not important does not make it unimportant in any way. It will still work but it will work against the person. So Jesus is first already before you were born. It is in your own interest to recognize him as such and let him be what he should be in your life. Then we looked at the meaning of Jesus being first. That means he's the foremost, the one that counts before anything else. That means he's of the highest priority. The one that is to be considered in every decision. And then that means also that he is the, of the highest value, the one that you honor most and revere most in your life. Then we began looking at why Jesus must be first, must remain first in your life. In the part one, we understood that it is because Almighty God himself has ordained that Jesus will be first. And we saw, we saw it. How? 
He created everything by him. You see, he chose him as the most preferred, the firstborn. And even the church, he made him the firstborn. Today we are looking at why might Jesus remain first in your life, part two. And today we are going to be understanding the fact that Jesus must be first because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I'll break that down for you in this episode. Shall we share in a word of prayer? Daddy, we love you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we glorify you for the beauty of your word, the glory of your truth. We know that our lives are never the same because you are at work in us now and forevermore. Amen. All right. Why must Jesus remain first in your life? John chapter 14 verse 6 is our main scripture. And it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Look at the definiteness of Jesus' communication. No religious leader ever communicated like this. So Jesus is not a religious leader. No person no matter the level of social leadership he has ever occupied, ever spoke like this. Because they cannot speak like that. Jesus says that, I am the way. He didn't say, I am one of the ways. Telling you that there is only one way to the Father. Then he says, I am the truth. Telling you that there is only one truth about something. Those who have become carried away by Satan... And say that, oh, truth is relative. Truth is not relative. Truth may be revealed in stages. Based on the level of the people it is being communicated to. But there is only one truth. Then it says, I am the life. <laughs> Praise God. We're talking about why must Jesus remain first. He is first already. But let him remain first in your life. And the point of discussion here is that Jesus must remain first because he is the way, the truth, and the life in your life. Today I'm going to try and let us look at only two. The fact that he is the way and the truth. Then maybe in our concluding episode, we'll look at the fact that he is the life. So Jesus must remain first in your life because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now let's take the way. Jesus must remain first in your life because he's the way. What does it mean by he's the way? When the Bible says that Jesus is the way, that means that he is the only channel through which the world was reconciled to God after the fall of Adam. So when Jesus said, I am the way, and he concluded that no one can come to the Father except through me. What he was telling the world is that I am the only way by which the world was reconciled. In other words, without Jesus, there would have been no reconciliation between man and God after Adam fell and took all mankind into the fall. So the only means by which the world could be reconciled to God was by Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, let me take you from verse 8. He says that, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. How did he do the reconciliation? By Jesus Christ. And hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now let's look at verse 19. To wit, now to witness that God was in Christ, reconciling who? The world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. So when Jesus was doing the reconciliation work, it was God reconciling the world unto himself. So when Jesus said, I am the way, in other words, I am the channel. To be a way means to be the channel of accomplishing something. 
So Jesus was the channel of the reconciliation of mankind to God. You cannot find reconciliation. Maybe you know that, okay, you, you are not right with God or you know that you, are, you, are, you have not yet... Um, been born again, and you are trying to find reconciliation with God through maybe a prophet somewhere, or a religious leader somewhere, or a stone somewhere, or a moon, a star. None of that can reconcile a man. Jesus is God's channel. So Jesus is the way. Now, what else does it mean to say he's the way? To say he's the way meant that he is the only way through whom a reconciled man can be adopted to become God kind. You see, why did God save mankind? Why did God reconcile the world? He reconciled the world for something. The plan of God did not end at just reconciling man. The reason why he reconciled man to himself was for man to fulfill a plan he had for man before man fell away from him. What is that plan? Let's look at it. From Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians 1, let's read verse 4 and 5. It says, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So God chose the human race when? Before the foundation of this world. For what? That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So the human race wasn't supposed to be in sin. That is why when the human race stepped into disobedience, the human race was separated from God. Now when they were separated from God, they were no more going to be able to live in God's presence in love. But God ordained this. He chose. Remember, he chose. He appointed that man for this before the world began. So the purpose of the reconciliation is to bring man to the original plan of God. Okay? Look at verse 5. Having predestinated us. So after he predestinated man to something, then he chose him. What did he predestinate man to? Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. So God's ultimate goal for mankind is that I'm going to make mankind mankind, but I'm later going to adopt that mankind as my children. So, man will be created by me, but there is coming a day where man will be born by me. That created man will become a being that is born by me. A being that has become my own child. Are you following that? Now, how was he going to make man created by him uh, a being that is now his child? He says, by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. So God chose Jesus Christ that he's going to be the means by which man will be adopted as his children. Are you following this? Then in the course of life, man fell away into sin and separated from God. So by that same Jesus, God sent him to come and redeem and reconcile man back to God. So that now that man is reconciled, through Jesus, man can be adopted. Are you following this? So when Jesus says, I am the way, it means I am the only means by which God reconciled man to himself. And I'm also the only means by which any man, after my reconciliation work, can become adopted. I take you to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. And then we'll look at it from the fourth verse. Galatians 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, Remember, God plans every, everything he does in times and seasons. If you go to Acts chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7, the Bible makes it clear that God has put things in times and seasons. So when God ordains that I'm going to do this in 2030, nobody can stop it. He has ordained it. So when God ordained that man will be adopted, there was a time appointed for that adoption to take place. But before that time for adoption would take place, man fell very early in his history on the earth and was separated from God. I get in that. Now, when the fullness of time came that God will adopt man, what did he do? Verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Because at that time, God's dealings with mankind was through the law. So Jesus had to come through that means. Made under the law. Go to verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law. 
What is the ultimate goal? That we might receive the adoption of sons. Praise God. So when Jesus says, I am the way, he means I am the channel by whom God reconciled the, the whole world. And I am the channel by whom anyone that has now been reconciled can now receive me and be adopted according to God's ordination or predestination. Did you get that? So when Jesus says, I am the way, it means this thing. Now, to also be the way means to be the mode or the order or the pattern by which God has ordained that things should be done. So, to be the way means you are the channel by which something is done. To be the way means that you are the way through which something is done. And to be the way means that you are the mode. To say, it's like someone is asking, what is the way of doing this? In other words, what is the pattern of doing this? What is the order of doing this? So Jesus was saying that in terms of life, he is the way. He is the order. He is the thing God has chosen that things should be done in life. In other words, if anything is done outside Jesus, whether it is ministry, whether it is a marriage, whether it is parenting, whether it is a leadership position, Whatever is done, if it is done outside of Jesus, it is a disorder. Child of God, listen to me carefully. Don't let the world deceive you into niceness and beauty and, you know, contemporary things. If anything is done outside Jesus, whatever is being done, it doesn't matter how the advantages may appear in the physical. It is in disorder before God because Jesus is the way. So you can read a book about parenting and it's teaching to do many things. Minor Jesus, it is disorder. You can have an educational system that is educating people. Minor Jesus, it is disorder. You can have a system of governance that is doing everything. Minor Jesus, it is disorder. You can have an approach to solving a problem that is doing everything. Minor Jesus, it is disorder. It doesn't matter the seeming progress that it may produce in the sight of men. Jesus is the way to do it. So you ask, in the midst of the challenges in the world, what is the way to solve it? Jesus. What is the way to run my family? Jesus. What is the way to run my marriage? Jesus. What is the way to govern a nation? Jesus. What is the way to run my business? Jesus. This is what it means to say Jesus is the way. And when we say Jesus, you don't need to struggle to say, uh, what do you mean by Jesus? Jesus is the word of God. Do you remember in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh, right? So it means the word of God is the standard, is the divinely ordained means by which things should be done. This is why Jesus must remain first in your life because he is the way. I'm going to go on a short break. I'm going to return. We'll look at the fact that he must remain first because he is the way truth. I'll be right back after this short break. Glory, hallelujah. Great news for our followers in Asia. Your favorite Good Life devotion is now in Pakistan. Watch it live on Faisal Television every Monday to Friday at 2 p.m. GMT or 7 a.m. Pakistan time with a repeat at 2 a.m. GMT or 7 p.m. Pakistan time. Also download the Faisal TV app on Google Play or Apple stores to catch your favorite Good Life devotion and be equipped to exhibit the divine life here on earth. Life is good. Enjoy. Praise God. Good. So, why must Jesus remain first? In this second part, we are dealing with the fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and we just looked at Jesus being the way. Now, Jesus must remain first in your life because Jesus is the truth. Now, when we talk about truth as used in the verse above, that's John chapter 14, verse 6, truth comes from um, the word verity. 
And that means the actual thing, the reality of a thing, that's the truth about it. When you talk about the truth about a matter, you're talking about the reality, the, the actual facts, beyond which there's nothing else. So when Jesus said, I am the way, and he says, I am the truth, he was saying that I am the reality about anything you see in life. Even your life, Jesus is the reality. Oh, oh, this is so serious. That means that <laughs> any life that is being lived without recognition to Jesus is not a real life. These are really serious spiritual things. People living out of Jesus are not really living. It's like dead people but still alive. Because there's no reality outside Jesus. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the reality. We put in the man's better that many of the activities people carry out in the world today are not being done in reality. They are meaningless repetitions. There is a reality about your health. There is a reality about your marriage, your parenting, about your life and everything around you. And Jesus is that reality. So somebody can come and tell you, oh, I've done a test and I've realized that your blood group is uh, maybe sickle cell. It's SS. So you, you are going to be having a kind of sickness every time this and that and that and that. He is giving you a certain reality. But that's not real. Now people don't like this. What you should do is, you mean my life is supposed to be this way. Go back to the word of God and find out what is the reality. So, and when your mom and dad gave birth to you, this is who you are. Okay, it's okay. But I've been born again. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Including the influence of that sickling gene. So if you don't go back to Jesus, you can't find reality. God never made anybody for a life of continual sickness. It could be something that is found physically. And they, they no, okay, people who have this often suffer this way. People who have this often suffer this way. It's a form of information. But what is the reality about your life from your maker? That is the truth that should run your life. Now, we put here that Jesus is the word of God that became flesh. And when he died and rose again, today he said, I have a father in heaven. Bible said that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So when we talk about Jesus being reality here, we're talking about the word of God. So there are some people who make the word of God secondary. They look elsewhere for reality. And they consider human or physical opinions above the word of God. This is disorder. That means that Jesus is not first. Because they, and that means that they are not in reality. Nobody can know the real fact about something out of God's word. So even if there is a, a machine or if something that is invented, if you want to know the reality, go to the word. <laughs> Praise God. God, the, the word of God must be first. What Jesus says about any situation is the reality about that situation. Forget about what a man is saying and focus on what Jesus is saying because that is your reality. What a man is saying can have some temporary effect. But it will not stand for long. It can fail you. But what Jesus tells you is the truth, is the reality. And that's why it can stand under any test. Don't be deceived by any circumstance at all on the earth. 
to make you think that something else is more real than Jesus. Something else is more real than the word of God. So Jesus must be first in your life because he is the truth. And that means he is the reality. What has the word said concerning that situation? Or that circumstance in your, in your life? Or the thing you are facing now? If you want to know the truth about it, stop listening to many people. Go to the word. The word will tell you the real truth about the circumstance. People can only conjecture. They can only experiment. But the word of God does not experiment. The word of God tells you the truth. For instance, if something is a disease and you want to find out the truth about the disease, you don't live your life with conjectures. Go to the word. What has the word of God said about the disease? And you have a simple answer that will make you a wonder to your whole world. Praise God. Hallelujah. So believe the word of God, because that is the truth about anything that you have to deal with. So Jesus must be first because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And in this episode, we show you what it means that he is the way and what it means that he is the truth. In our following episode, I'm going to talk about the fact that he must remain first because he is the life. But have you watched me on today's episode and you have not yet received Jesus? It means you've not stepped into truth. You've not stepped into reality. You've not, you have not maximized the way. You are not living according to the way God planned. God made you human that you be adopted in Jesus. That adoption must take place today. Don't remain out of the plan of God. How do you get adopted? Believe that Jesus died and rose again with all your heart and that as we speak now, he's alive at the right hand of the Father, reigning as king over the whole of the universe and declare him as Lord of your life. The Holy Spirit, who is a divine personality on the earth, will do something in you and produce a new type of being called a son of God. If you want to have this as your results, say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I love you so much. And I'm blessed to have heard that you died and rose again and that you are alive. I believe this with all my heart. And I therefore say, Jesus is Lord of my life. Hallelujah. If you done this with all your heart, something has taken place. You have become a new creation. Now, a new creation feeds on the word of God and in the fellowship of the sons of God. Make sure you remain connected to this truth on the glad devotion and get planted in a Bible teaching church where they don't only teach, but they believe and live their lives by the truth. And you will remain in Christ till he comes. Till I see you in our next episode. As we look at how to run up on the subject of Jesus first, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binder. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.